Hello, I'm Anthony Vaughn with the product marketing team for Texas Instruments Hercules Safety Microcontroller Group. And I'm Devakar Bunso with TI's Hercules Safety Microcontroller Applications team. Today, we will introduce you to the Ethernet module incorporated into many of TI's Hercules TMS570 and RM Safety Microcontrollers and show you how to configure it using Halcogen, TI's tool for generating initialization and peripheral driver code for Hercules MCUs. We will also show you how to download the lightweight IP web page server demo source code from the Hercules wiki page and how to run it on a Hercules development kit using Code Composer Studio. For this exercise, we will need a Windows-based PC, an Ethernet-equipped TMS570 or RM Hercules development kit, an Ethernet router with DHCP support, and two Ethernet cables. We will also need Halcogen, Code Composer Studio, and a web browser. The Ethernet Media Access Controller, or EMAC, and Management Data Input-Output, or MDIO peripherals on TMS570 and RM48 devices provide a full-featured Ethernet interface. The EMAC peripheral conforms to the IEEE 802.3 standard, which specifies the carrier sense multiple access with collision detection access method, or CSMACD, and physical layer specifications. The EMAC supports 10 BSD at 10 megabits per second and 100 BSDX at 100 megabits per second in both half duplex and full duplex modes. The EMAC control module provides an interface from the CPU to the EMAC and MDIO modules. The EMAC control module controls device interrupts and incorporates an 8 kilobyte internal RAM to hold EMAC buffer descriptors, also known as CPPI RAM. The EMAC module provides an efficient interface between the processor and a local network. The MDIO module implements the 802.3 serial management interface to interrogate and control up to 32 Ethernet files connected to the device by using a shared to wired bus. Most Hercules development kits implement a connection between the microcontroller and the external physical layer device, PHY, using the MII, or Media Independent Interface, as shown in the diagram. Hercules MCUs also support the RMII, or Reduced Media Independent Interface, to minimize the number of pins necessary to implement a connection to an Ethernet PHY. The Lightweight Internet Protocol, or LWIP, is an open source implementation of TCP IP stack that is widely used in embedded applications. The LWIP stack runs on top of the hardware abstraction layer that connects the MCU to the external physical interface. The integrated software consists of four main layers. Number one, hardware abstraction layer. This layer implements the lower level hardware abstraction APIs that can be used for control and configuration of the EMAC device. EMAC and MDIO layers are part of the Helcogen release and the file layer is part of the application. Number two, LWIP network interface layer. The purpose of this layer is to connect the device hardware abstraction layer to the network stack that can form and interpret network packets. The device hardware abstraction layer hooks into the interface layer of LWIP. This is also referred to as the device specific port or the HDK interface for LWIP. It defines standard interface entry points and state variables. Number three, LWIP application layer. This layer contains the Ethernet application which includes an HTTP server or an echo server. Data packets start and end this layer. Number four, system application layer. This includes the system initialization and is generated based on the Helcogen graphical user interface. This layer configures the device clock frequencies and pin multiplexing. I am now going to demonstrate how to configure the EMAC and SCI modules using Halcogen. If you do not already have Halcogen, you can download it from the tools and software area on the website ti.com slash Hercules. Halcogen can also be installed directly from the software DVD that is included in all Hercules development kits. The first step is to launch Halcogen. To start the Halcogen application, go to the Windows or Start menu and select Programs, Texas Instruments, Hercules, Halcogen. To start a new Halcogen project, select File, New Project. Once the new project window has opened, the device family and specific device must be selected. Then the name of the project can be entered along with the location for all of the generated code to be stored. In Halcogen, the first step is to create a new project. We do this by clicking on File, then selecting New Project. In the New Project window, we select our family and device. For this example, we will select the TMS570 family and then the TMDX570LS31HDK device. Next, we enter the name of our project in the Name field. We will call this project ENET. We can also choose the directory where Halcogen will store its generated files using the Location field. The tool selection menu at the bottom of this window can be used to select the development tool set that will be used for project compilation. Supported tool sets include Texas Instruments Code Composer Studio, 
the Kyle ARM toolset and the IAR toolset. We will leave this field set to Texas Instruments Tools. Next we click the OK button and Halcogen will start the new project configuration for us. In this view, we will see a block diagram of the microcontroller. We can navigate through Halcogen by either using this block diagram or by using the tabs located at the top of the screen. The next step is to go to the Driver Enable tab and enable the EMAC and SCI2 drivers. The SCI drivers will be used to communicate with a terminal program running on the PC. The next step is to navigate to the PINMUX tab. We need to assign the PIN functionality to MII module. Then we scroll down to the PIN G3 and select MDIO. And then to the V5 PIN and select MD Clock. The PINMUX selection is now complete. The next step is to configure the SCI module. To do this, go to the SCI2 tab and select the SCI LIN data format subtab. Here we can configure many parameters for the SCI module. For this project, we will set it up to use a 9600 baud rate, two stop bits, eight data bits with no parity. The last step in Halcogen is to generate code by selecting File, Generate Code. Halcogen has now configured the system application layer to use the Ethernet module. We could then import the generated code into Code Composer Studio and use it to initialize the MCU and call the generated SCI and Ethernet drivers. For this particular exercise, we will now download, install, and run a completed web server example that utilizes a similar configuration as the one we just created in Halcogen. To get this example, we go to the EMAC tab in Halcogen in order to get a link to download the completed LWIP Ethernet web server demo. This link will open up the wiki page that contains detailed information about the Ethernet module and lightweight IP implementation. Once we have downloaded and installed the demo software, we can import the project into Code Composer Studio. The default installation directory is C colon slash Texas Instruments. To start Code Composer Studio, go to the Windows or Start menu and select Programs, Texas Instruments, Code Composer Studio, Code Composer Studio. The first step is to import the project into CCS. In the project menu, select Import Existing CCS Eclipse Project. Select the directory, which is C colon slash Texas Instruments, Helcogen, EMAC Driver, and LWIP demonstration. Make sure to pick the correct version of the project build. There is one version for TMS570 and another one for RM48. For this demonstration, we will use the TMS570 version. You can browse through the included source code and drivers by expanding the project in Project Explorer. Under Helcogen TMS570, you will find the device and peripheral device drivers that Helcogen generated. Sys underscore main dot C includes the user defined code. It calls emac underscore lwip underscore main function and assigns the device IP address. Function emac underscore lwip underscore main is defined in lwip underscore main dot C. This function calls the initialization routines. The demo software includes the lwip IPs, which can be found under lwip 1.3.2. You can find a more detailed description of the different functions on the wiki page that we used to download the demo application. We will now build this project. Go to the Project menu and select Project Build. Once the build has completed successfully, the executable is ready to be programmed in the MCU's flash memory. To program the code into the MCU, go to Run, Debug. CCS will initiate a connection with the MCU and program the code into flash. While the code is being programmed, we'll set up the hardware. Connect one Ethernet cable from router to the HDK and the other Ethernet cable to the PC. You may use any terminal program for this portion of the exercise, but we will use an Eclipse-based terminal that can be integrated into Code Composer Studio. To launch the terminal, go to View, Other, and select Terminal. If you do not have this option, you may need to add the terminal plugin to your installation of Code Composer Studio. For instructions on how to do this, please go to the wiki page shown below. The terminal configuration needs to match the SCI configuration we did earlier, that is 9600 baud rate, 8-bit data length, and two stop bits with no parity. Now that the programming is complete and all hardware connections are done, press the reset switch on the HDK. As we see on the terminal, the MCU has initialized the EMAC and is running a web server. The IP address of the device is reported. Copy the IP address into a web browser, and we can see the Hercules web page come up. This is served by the EMAC module we just configured on the microcontroller. There are a number of online resources available where you can go to get more information about Hercules microcontrollers. The first is the Hercules web pages that are on ti.com. Here you can download official device data sheets, 
technical reference manuals, and application notes. You can also download software like Halkogen, now Flash, and the High End Timer integrated development environment. You can also order development kits through the TIE store from these web pages. The next online resource that is at your disposal is the TI Engineer to Engineer or E2E support forum. Here you can find the latest news and announcements about Hercules MCUs in addition to searching for technical content about Hercules. There is also a team of applications engineers available to answer questions posted on this forum. The final web-based resource is the Hercules Wikis. These sites feature how-to guides, introduction videos, and general information about Hercules MCUs. The wikis also contain useful information like development kit forward schematics and training content. We hope that you have found this video useful. Thank you for watching.